Guys, I hope you are well. You've got Mr. Everything English and boy, oh boy, it's been a while. It's been a while. Now, a few differences. You probably noticed it says Everything Education, not Mr. Everything English. Guys, everything remains the same when it comes to Mr. Everything English. All that's changed is um, the lessons that I offer, the classes I offer are now under the banner of Everything Education. So if you want some more information, guys, do head over to www.everythingeducation.co.uk and that is me shamelessly plugging what I do. All right, now, guys, when I was thinking, what should I talk about in the first video back? Nobody wants to hear about similes and metaphors and adjectives and this and that in the first video in September. I was thinking if I was a student getting ready for my GCSEs, what would I want to know? And this is what I do with every video. I try to put myself in your shoes. What would you want to watch? What content do you care about? So for this first video, guys, I'm going to talk about as a year 11 student. Now, if you're not in year 11, you can do one or two things. If you think this guy is going to chat a bit of rubbish for the next five, 10 minutes, turn it off because this may not apply to you. However, you may think, you know what? I've got my exams coming out one day. Let me have a look at what kind of timeline I would be expected to follow. Nonetheless, if you're in year 11, there are many, many things that you're going to be told you should be doing this year. Many, many things. You're going to be pulled this way. You're going to be pulled this way. You're going to be pulled this way. And I remember, guys, when I used to watch my year 11s, Sometimes I will feel sorry for them because you're getting a barrage of information. Now, one thing I try to do with my content is very less waffle and give you exactly what you need. Now, in my opinion, guys, the, the, the first thing you want to do is not overcomplicate what you have to do this year. It's very clear, very simple. You've been working for it since year seven. So if you're in year 11, guys, in this video, I'm going to talk you through a timeline of what should be happening each month between now and your GCSEs in June 2022. Let's begin. So what should you be doing? We are currently in September. We are currently in September which normally means you have the rest of the year ahead of you, but not if you're in year 11, because between September and December, these are the crucial months. If you get it wrong, you're going to play catch up and you're going to play catch up so much that you're not going to get to the finish line in time. So guys, September, depending upon what your school's been doing, the September half term, so between September and October, you should finish off learning any outstanding content if there is any so for example guys i know a few schools that are starting with macbeth because they didn't teach macbeth in year 10. whatever the situation is in your school if you have any outstanding work that hasn't been taught yet any units that haven't been covered any poems that haven't been covered this half term is the term where this should be done however this is a new and I've written September. Really, guys, I'm talking about the first week of September. Get your mind right. Accept the fact that you're in year 11. Too many kids in year 11, guys, they, some, they for some reason wake up at around this time of the year and over here they realize, oh my God, I've got GCSE exams. No, 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 no. Get your mind right here. Accept that you have GCSEs. Accept that there's a level of standard that's expected from you and accept that you will have to become comfortable in being uncomfortable. It's going to be tough. You're going to have to revise. You're going to have to pass papers. You're going to have to get used to working maybe harder than you have worked in the past. But either accept it or you're going to regret it come August 2022. So guys, that's September. Now, by the end of October, which is the end of the first half term, your school should have finished teaching you content. Done, done, done. We then move on to November. And this for me is where the kind of the training camp, if you like, if you want to see it as a fight, this is where the training camp begins. All content is now complete. November the 1st, guys, is where you should, in my opinion, create a revision timetable. Why should you create a revision timetable? Because it guides your revision. 
it makes you um, not be the kind of person who revises random things on random days but has no kind of timeline of where do I start and where do I want to end. Guys, I, to this day, guys, to this day, I plan and I write down all of my stuff for my videos and my content. Um, if I didn't plan, I would almost make random videos at random times. You have to make a revision timetable. First things first, guys, please, I beg you, make sure your revision timetable is realistic. If you know that you play football every Friday, 6 to 7 p.m., don't say you're gonna revise maths Fridays, 6 to 7 p.m. Please be realistic. Now, at the moment, your revision timetable shouldn't be full on. No one should be revising five hours a day, staying up all night, waking up in the morning early to revise. Slow, slow and steady. We're gonna rise as we go through the months. Now, why are we revising here? Because normally, guys, at the end of November, the beginning of December, you have your first round of mock exams. You have your first round of mock exams. So that's what we're preparing for. Now, even though we're going to finish our mock exams here, the revision that you begin here, it carries on all the way through. But this is what kickstarts it. Now, after you're getting mock exams in November, schools normally mark them over the Christmas holidays. And in January, when you go back, you should be getting your feedback. Unless some schools who do it just before the Christmas holidays. Either way, guys, January and February, what do we do now? These are the months where number one, you learn from your mock exams. What went well, what could be improved, what do you need to work on? So for example, if timing was an issue, if, I don't know, maybe you struggled with Romeo and Juliet, maybe you struggled with science, whatever the issue was, you learn from your mock exams and you make tweaks to your revision accordingly. Then, 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 and this for me is the important part. At this point, guys, we introduce exam practice at home. I don't mean fake exam practice where you work for five minutes, go on your phone for 10 minutes, then go to the toilet, have some food, come back and go again. No, 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 no. I mean real exam practice where you sit and you time yourself and you write and your hand hurts. You want to get used to doing exam after exam after exam. So when we go from here to our exam, your GCSE exam feels like just another exam rather than a massive shock to your system. So that's what happens guys in January, February. And then you have your second round of mock exams around March. Now this series of mock exams guys, this is more for you in my opinion than the school. Whenever I feedback my year 11s when it comes to their mock exams, at this point of the year, it's so close now to the end that you just wanna make small tweaks to sharpen them. You don't wanna completely overhaul them. Therefore guys, for you, if you've been doing all of this, it's just to see that now that I've put in all this work, where do I currently stand? Your last mock exam, any last minute tweaks. And that's why I said guys, that the month of April is the month where you make those tweaks. And you carry on revising and you carry on doing past papers which then leads you on to the May and June GCSE exams. Now guys, you're gonna notice one trend. The, the most common uh, word on the board probably is revise exam papers, revise exam papers, revise. Why is that? Revision is looking back on what you learnt and, and revisiting it. However, revision by itself is pointless. You could know everything about Macbeth and you can know every poem inside out, and you can know quotes coming out of your ears. But it's pointless, because it's a writing exam, not a memory exam. That's why the past paper practice is so important. You have to learn how to write essays on Macbeth, how to write essays on the poems, how to do English language past papers under timed conditions. Now guys, this is the timeline that I recommend you all to follow. Now of course, the days and the dates may vary depending upon the school you go to, but this can and should be followed by all of you. Remember guys, when I look at exams, I look at it as a fighter getting ready for a fight. You wanna peak at the right time, so you perform on the day. Over here, I said, is where we start our revision. And it's not anything heavy, it's very light. But as the months go by, 
the hours should slowly increase. And if you're slowly increasing them, then it won't be much of a shock to your system. Don't be that kid who does nothing, 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 all of a sudden starts revising 10 hours a day. Because you won't gain much in the last two months. You want to slowly peak. Okay, guys, now that is my timeline for what I advise you all to be doing in this upcoming academic year. I really, really, really do hope, guys, that the series of videos that I make between now and June 2022 really help you for your exams. I've already thought about how I'm going to make the content better, how I would reteach some of the old stuff and make it better. Because guys, remember, I'm always learning. I'm always thinking of new ideas. So hopefully, guys, you benefit from the content. As always, guys, thank you for your support. It's been Mr. Everything English. Peace.